Hi, welcome to James Miller Lifeology, where you learn to simplify and transform your spirit, mind, and body. My name is James Miller. I'm a licensed psychotherapist and a composer. Thank you so much for joining with us today. Let's get started. I really wanted to take a quick second just to thank all of you who continually support and listen to James Miller Lifeology Radio. It has been such an exciting adventure for me. There are so many amazing things that are happening over here that I definitely want to share with you. So for the next few months, every person who signs up for my free newsletter will be entered into a drawing. In this monthly drawing, whomever wins will win a free 30-minute Skype call with me, James Miller. I will help you simplify and transform your spirit, mind, and body. So go to my website, jamesmillerlifeology.com, and sign up for my free newsletter there. Who knows? Maybe you will be the lucky winner. So sign up today. I have a great show for you today. I'm going to help you focus on life's journey instead of only focusing on the destination. I'll also be interviewing business expert and marketing strategist, Heather Ann Havenwood, who shares her personal story of success and how her new podcast, The Win, is giving her listeners the encouragement and confidence to find their own path. Frank Lloyd Wright was one of the greatest and most influential architects of the 20th century. As a boy, he spent a lot of time at his uncle's farm. It was there that he had one of the most formative experiences of his life. He was nine years old, it was a winter's day, and he and his uncle had just walked across a snow-covered field. Frank's uncle stopped the young boy and pointed to the tracks they had left in the snow. Frank's meandered all over the place while his uncles went in a straight line from start to finish. Notice how your tracks wander aimlessly from the fence to the cattle to the woods and back again, his uncle said. And see how my tracks aim directly to my goal. There is an important lesson in that, son. Years later, the world-famous architect pointed to the important lesson he learned that day, but it was not the lesson his uncle intended him to learn. I determined right then, said Frank Lloyd Wright, not to miss most things in life as my uncle had. It's about the journey, not the destination. The destination or the journey? When we were younger, we would go on long road trips and we'd always ask our parents, are we there yet? Are we there yet? And when we were younger, the journey itself was one of the longest times in our young life because we just wanted to get there. The reality is, as we get older, it's kind of the same thing. But if we focus specifically on the end result, once we finally get there, we're not going to realize all the lessons we've learned along the way. If I was granted a wish, and that wish was to be the most successful business person ever, and I woke up the next day and I was very successful, that would be amazing. But what happens then when I would have to make certain decisions about how my business and company would go? Well, if I was automatically put in that new position, I wouldn't have any background or data to really understand what is a right decision and what's a wrong decision. I would do many things that would eventually cause my business to crumble. It's a really good analogy to think about because if we get so caught up in the end result, but don't really pay attention to the lessons we learn along the way, we will not be able to sustain the growth and the success that we've gained. Sometimes many people say, I'm not going to do this menial job, or I'm not going to do that because it's beneath me, or my goal is to go in a different direction. And sometimes that makes sense. But if we don't know the ins and outs of every single thing about our life, or even about our personality, about how we're going to react in certain situations, or how we're going to respond when someone says something or does something to us, well, we're really not going to be well balanced when it does come for us to be in a position of leadership, or in a position that may potentially be in the public eye. I know many other people who often will think, well, I don't really know how to get to the end result. They focus so much on what that looks like that they don't realize that what they can do right this second helps them move closer to that journey. Sometimes it can be a very, very small thing as simple as creating your workstation, creating that space for yourself. And what I mean by that is just simply this. When you come home, already have your workstation set up so you don't have to set it up and put it together because that actually takes away from the creativity that you have. If you're an artist, have your sketch pad or easel ready. If you're a musician, have your instrument tuned and already ready for you so that once you get home, you can record or you can compose. If you're an author, have your manuscript in your computer already. And there are many, many other types of things that you can take that philosophy and implement it today. Because if we think too far ahead, we won't really realize that what we do right this second to prepare for the next moment in our life and the one right after that, then we'll actually never gain any forward momentum at all. We just get simply stuck in the end results and not realize that there's so many small little things we can do every moment to get us closer and closer. I've shared this analogy before in the past. If I'm going from LA and I'm going to drive to New York City and I'm driving at night, well, I know that I'm going to get there, but all I really have in front of me is maybe 50, 60 feet out in front of me from where the car's lights are to really show me the road, show me the path. That's the same type of concept. When we focus on the journey of it, in other words, when we focus on what's right in front of us, that gives us the ability and understanding to say, oh, now I see a little bit more. Let me do a little bit more. And that is how we grow closer and closer to who we want to be and and the success that we're looking for. You'll find that most people who are really successful really struggled and often, quote unquote, failed all throughout their life and through many ventures that they were in. But that's how they learned. They learned how to change something. They learned how to slightly pivot their perception 
And with a lesson along the way, that's how they become successful. You are no different. I'm no different. It's a wonderful thing. So when we focus specifically on the journey itself, what you're learning right this second, what are you implementing right this second in your life, that's going to get you closer and closer to that magnificent, successful life that you're looking for. Remember, it's about the journey, not the destination. Did you know that I have a YouTube channel? That's actually how Lifeology started. I have well over 150 episodes that I've created specifically for you. I do know many people struggle with listening to a full 30-minute show, so these YouTube episodes are about three minutes long. Each episode teaches you one simple lesson that you can practice daily, which will help you simplify and transform your spirit, mind, and body. Simply go to my website, jamesmillerlifeology.com, and subscribe to my YouTube channel there, or go to youtube.com and search for my name, James Miller Lifeology. Heather Ann Havenwood is a serial entrepreneur and regarded as a top authority on digital marketing, email marketing, and online publishing business strategies. Heather Ann has been named in the top 50 must-follow women entrepreneurs for 2017 by the Huffington Post. She has also been called Chief Sexy Boss. It's a nickname from her Amazon bestseller book, Sexy Boss, How Women Are Beating the Big Boys. Heather Ann now is a radio podcast host of her show, The Win, where she shares her incredible story of success and loss as an entrepreneur and her true happiness in, in a completely compelling and vulnerable way that audiences can relate to and always learn from. So welcome to my show, Heather Ann. Thank you. Yes, it's such a pleasure to have you here. You know, when I was reading all the information you sent me, you have done so many amazing things that I can't wait for you to share your inspirational story. And of course, we're definitely going to talk about your podcast, The Win. So once again, thank you for being a guest today. So give us a little bit of background as far as as this, this serial entrepreneur, this, this strategist. I mean, like I said, you've done so much. How did that even come about? You know, James, I, I think that my story st- kind of starts where a lot of people's stories start, which Mm -hmm. is, um, I was doing what I call everything I was supposed to be doing. I go to college and get a job at the, you know, a big company at a fortune 500 company. And that's how life was supposed to go. That was it. Yeah. (laughs) And I did that. I worked for a big company called SBC global, which is huge. Oh yeah. I've heard of that. Yeah. You've heard of that. It's kind of big. Uh, now they've been spun up and whatnot, but this is back in the late nineties. And, um, I was working for them in outside sales, business to business sales, which is an interesting story by itself because I was young. I was 25 and the average person in my office was 40. But long story short, um, I got number, I basically was number one in the country, you know, sales rep. I did very well my fourth uh-huh. year. And I thought, oh, this is exciting. I'm going to get like another promotion or like, you know, I just thought, oh, this is what I'm supposed to be doing. Sure. I make a lot of money. They give me like a little and we're all happy. But long story short, I got uh, fired. Oh my gosh. <laughs> After they gave me what I call the pat on the head, you know, I was hoping for a Rolex, but I got like a pat on the head <laughs> and like a pink Cadillac. I'm just kidding. Um, but I didn't get that, you know, and I got pat on the head. And then a couple of weeks later, I got fired and I was really confused, you know. Yeah. And so and this is a whole story around this. But uh, the main thing is I really realized all I knew was I didn't want that again. That was it. You know, yeah. sometimes life is simple. You're not sure where to go. You just know, like, not that. Yes. Yeah. So that's kind of what happened. And I ended up uh, being at my girlfriend's house about six months later because I didn't get a job for a while. I didn't know what mm. to do. That's so hard. I, yeah. We definitely want to talk about the emotional aspect of that, but go ahead. Yeah. But yeah, just, I mean, quick kind of fun. It's a fun little story. People always like it. As I was sitting in my girlfriend's couch, she'd just gotten married and her fiance slash husband, I guess, was flipping through the channel on a Sunday. And he stopped at this, stopped at this uh, uh, infomercial and it said, do you want to control your life? <laughs> do you want to, you know, make money? And I'm like, yeah. You know, I, I had no clue what else they were saying. And they're like, come to this seminar tomorrow at one o'clock at this hotel room. And I'm like, write it down. <laughs> not my, sister, my friend, my girlfriend. And I'm like, yeah, I'm going home tomorrow. I mean, I'm like running over to this hotel the next day. And I walk in and not telling anybody. And I sit down and it's a three hour pitch and or two and a half hour pitch. And they basically sell me a seminar for $3,000 long story. And I didn't have that money. And then they said the magic words. They said, it's only a thousand dollars for your spouse. And uh, oh. I nudged the guy next to me, didn't know his name, and I'm like, Can I be your spouse? <laughs> He's like, Uh, sure, what's your name? <laughs> so we go to the back of the room and I'm totally blind, different last names, different names. I mean the whole I mean the guys knew, right? But yeah. it was a thousand dollars. So long story short, the the company was like, What's your deal? We know you're lying, but <laughs> You're interesting. You're pretty, you know, you really know what you want. What's your deal? I ended up working for that company, moving to Orlando, and they taught people how to buy and sell houses. And so I started my first real estate investing company. Wow. So that's kind of like how it all like. What a serendipitous, I mean, the, yeah. the, it's so random in the sense if you just happen to see this infomercial and it would yeah. have rolled out that way. That's amazing. 
Jesus. I actually ended up, they, the, the company redid the commercial a couple years later, and I was one of the people on the infomercial. Oh, really? <laughs> that was cool. and I, you know, I had like cousins like, why is Heather on the infomercial? Like, why are you up at 3 a.m.? But I mean, you know, I actually ended up being on their B-roll infomercial a couple years later. That is hysterical. That's what I, I really do like that story. That's great. <laughs> That's how I became an entrepreneur. I don't think, it, I don't think entrepreneurship I don't think you go after finding entrepreneurship. I think mm. entrepreneurship finds you. Yeah. It's well, a journey. Yeah, and I, I really agree with that. I know for me, one of the things when I made my rollout or change once, because I have a, you know, still a practice up in D.C., which I went once a month for a couple of days, I go up there and I see patients. But for me, when I made the shift for myself, the foundational piece for my change was I want to be location independent. I want to do what I'm doing, whatever that may be. I want to do it if I want to go to London, if I want to go to the beach, if I want to do this, I want to do that. And so when I really started to map that out for myself, just kind of like you, I don't want to feel this way anymore. So that's going to be kind of the foundational piece. For me, the, the rollout was I want to be location independent. And then everything just started to fall into place. So I think that's one of the things if and people don't really know what they want to do per se, but if they know what, what resonates with them. For me, I want to be location independent. For you, you don't want to feel this way anymore. So mm-hmm. that is, uh, gives that people to say, oh, okay, well then what can I do from location independent? How does that make sense? And that's when I think people... I don't want to say it's as easy as that, but that's how people can really start to formulate what the next step is in their life when they know kind of what they do want and what they don't want based off of a feeling. Absolutely. I, you know, because I think at that time, I, mean, I was 25, 26, so all my friends were like, well, just go get another job. You know, I mean, like that seemed like the mm-hmm. obvious thing to do, but it was kind of like, yeah, I don't want to build something again because in this B2B world, I pretty much built my own little company. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, and, exactly. Like, they gave me the product, but it was like up to you. You build it. So I felt like I built this and they mm-hmm. just like one day <laughs> took it away from me. And I just felt like, yeah. like, I don't want that again. And that's all I knew. I yeah. didn't know what to do. It's not like I had, you know, a min- mentor or a mm-hmm. mask or any of that. It was just like, well, I don't want that. And yeah. then I just kind of hung out for a while. <laughs> <laughs> and and then, like, uh, then all of a sudden you're at a late yeah. night infomercial. <laughs> late night infomercial. That's right. <laughs> that's so funny. That's right. So as you kind of roll through your own life and you know, all these different these different successes that you've had, I mean, how, how has that gone? How is that for you when you reflect back on that time in your life when you fought that way? And now with the juxtaposition between then versus now, what what comes out of that when you think about it? Well, back then I was very scared mm-hmm. because everyone was all my quote unquote friends are, you know, people in my life at the time were getting had jobs and they were doing well and they were moving up. And by the way, the, the time frame was like 98, 99, 2000, then 911 happened, mm. a lot of people lost their jobs. So there was a lot of like turmoil and I felt like I was going against the grain a lot. I felt like I was doing what I wasn't supposed to be doing. You know, my yeah. mom one time called me <laughs> in panic. I mean, I, it's I totally out of love. It's your parents, right? But I remember I answered the phone and she's like, oh my God, I just heard you're going to be an entrepreneur. What are you doing? <laughs> like, she totally freaked on me. And, um, I I said, well, first of all, who told you? Right? That was like, like who in the face? She's like, your uncle. And I'm like, well, he's an entrepreneur. What is he upset about? And then um, she's like, but I found, I found, my mother's very Southern. She's a very Southern woman in, from Arkansas, Arkansas. Hot Springs, so she's got the southern accent, right? <laughs> she's, well, honey, I found a job for you. It's eight dollars an hour. Oh, You're goodness. a secretary at a at a manufacturing company in Hope, Arkansas. You should come down here. It's got benefits. I'm just like, <laughs> Mom, I'm making like twenty grand a month doing. Oh my God, you gonna die. You know, it's just, you know, but <laughs> that's <laughs> you a circle. Mom, you know what I mean? But that that was what I was moving through. Was yeah. like not only my own fear, yeah, but that's, like that's generational true. fear. Mm-hmm. And me, stuff and like what are you doing and yeah. i had my uncle go and now your mother told me to call you and I'm, like, <laughs> I'm like but you're an entrepreneur I'm like oh that's me i'm a man i'm like what does that have to do with anything so it was yeah, i move against not only my own personal yeah. stuff then i had to move through generational conversation mm-hmm. move through oh i'm a woman that's how i'm supposed to do so there was there's been that for 15 years yeah. of constant some kind of conversation I had to move through and it wasn't really till I hit the rock bottom. I actually went through massive bankruptcy and foreclosure. Then I was really questioning one of that eight dollar an hour job. <laughs> I'm sure. I really realized that it was not a destination. It was a journey. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And once I got that, that entrepreneurship wasn't about a destination, which corporate world is. Corporate world's like be here, be here for twenty two point five years and you get a retirement and then. Right? So yeah. 
in, in entrepreneurship, if you think like that, you, you won't do well. Mm-hmm. You have to unleash and completely let go of that entire mindset. Well, because before you, you did what you were supposed to do, quote unquote, okay. you went, you did to the corporate, you went all that and it didn't work out. So if you use that same modality or mentality with something that's your rollout or there's something that you're doing, well, if you know it didn't work before, you have to then reframe that and rework it to a degree that if it's your lifestyle, your mentality, your personality, your your all, if you will, your essence of who you are, and then that's how it morphs and changes. And you know, one of the things I actually did a show about this a couple of weeks ago in the sense of if we don't grow and develop for what the need is of the industry, the need is for ourselves, and we get stuck – well, then we are going to quote unquote fail because we're not developing and growing based off of what is happening right the second and then what's happening Which the next is second. Counterintuitive. Yes. And, and what you just described is death in corporate world. Yes. Do yes. not change. Do not de- develop. Do not go beyond what your job is to be. And if you do, then you will either get fire canned or ostracized. Yes. Yes. Which in the that is corporate world and. In our world, if you don't morph and grow and expand, you will be left. Yes. Which I think is more in reality to humanistic because think of back in like, let's go caveman days, you Mm -hmm. know, if you didn't continue to grow your man skills on learning to hunt the next Yeah, that's true. That's a great point. You were going to die. If you stayed small and just under the rules, you were eventually not going to eat, Mm -hmm. right? It's like kind of on that scale. Right. So I think that entrepreneurship is uh, more in alignment with being a human being than it is a prisoner. And I don't mean that like so sure, negative. No, yeah. It's just like the, the difference in the concept. Because I remember when I was in Cobra America, I was taking courses and of course, Dale Carnegie, all these mass you know, sales courses because they, they, they pay for them. <laughs> so I was like, <laughs> oh, I get. so uh, they were like, whoa, whoa, whoa. You know, they were kind of like, why are you you can't don't buck the system, Heather. Yeah. Don't buck the system. And I'm like, well, isn't the system designed to be bucked? You know, so yeah, of course. that's how I see it now. But in that in particular uh, structures, that can be um, ostracized to yes. grow. And expand. Yeah, and that's a great point. And I think that just leads to the sense of upon reflection of that, everything you've overcome yeah. makes you the more most successful person you can be in this moment because you've learned those lessons. And now in the next moment, whatever you learned in this moment, now makes you even more successful because you constantly have that awareness that change, growth, development is going to allow you to reach whatever the next destiny is you have or next goal you have because you've learned all those things along the way. Yeah, oh, it's so true. Yeah. Well, I want to hear more about your podcast. Thank you. Yeah, so uh, I was sharing you what I call in the green room. (laughs) In our pre-call, yeah. (laughs) I call it green room because it's like way more fun. I, I, you know, I actually do like that. I may start using that as well. <laughs> the green room. You know, like, you like actors and actresses. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah, I met, you know, Arnold Schwarzenegger in the green room one time. <laughs> and you always had this visualization that the green room was like amazing. Yeah. Like, food and beer, everything everywhere. And it's like people are just, oh, you know, the green room. It's probably just some like little warehouse. But I have a visualization that it's amazing. So we're in the do, green yeah. room, we were talking about uh, my podcast and how my first podcast back in 2013 called The Sexy Boss Show. You're welcome to find it in the graveyard of iTunes. <laughs> I think I put like, I did five episodes of Friends that I knew. I put it all up on the same day and then that nothing happened. <laughs> oh gosh, yeah. I called the graveyard. At, uh, so that was my first experience podcasting. No clue what I was doing. Um, so there you go. So I thought podcasting doesn't work. And that's what I thought. And then around 2015, I had a friend of mine reach out to me and, and say, hey, can I interview you for my podcast? I'm like, sure. What do I do? You know, and I did it. We just had this great conversation because I knew him and we just had this fun conversation. And I guess he posted it. And then a couple of weeks later, I got a, a call for a potential co- coaching client. $5,000. Oh, wow. Yeah. And I thought to myself, huh, that's cool. You know, yeah. 30 minutes of just talking mm-hmm. and I got a client, you know, so to put two and two together. As an entrepreneur, that, yeah. You're like, I see something. <laughs> right. Let's do that. More of that. Right. So I thought, wait a minute. I don't want to start a show again mm-hmm. because that didn't work. So let me, let me do what most people do in the TV world, in the acting world, is that actors don't usually become directors and producers until they learn how to act. Right. Mm-hmm. So. I said, I'm going to become an amazing guest and I'm going to focus on guesting how to get on, how to get on podcasts, what people want, how do I add value, how, how do I share my story, not my resume, 
how can I just really focus on being an amazing guest for mm-hmm. you as the host? It's your, these are your people. You know, I, I'm, I'm your guest, not only on your show, but also in your, in your home, yeah. in front of your people. So how can I add value? So I did that for a year and a half and I did over 150 episodes. Oh my gosh. Heather, wow. I did a lot. Yeah. And people kept asking, you start your own show. I'm like, nope, no, nope, nope, nope. I'm here for you. I'm focused yeah. on you. And I promoted I still do. I'm always a fan. If I'm on your show, I promote, right? Which is, uh, some people don't do that. Yeah, and I really focused on just adding as much value as possible and understanding the business. Mm-hmm. I mean, think about acting. Even Oprah, she didn't start her own show until she was on shows. That's right. Then. Yes. For years, she learned the business of TV before she said, I'm ready for my own mm-hmm. show. Why do we all not do that? Right? So, yeah. That was the intention. So I, you know, coming back to uh, June of 2016, then I was ready and I launched my own show. Um, and in uh, was it six, seven seven months, eight months, eight months, I'm on 45 radio stations. Oh to my know, god, that's amazing! I heart and everything else. I mean, it's just because I had t- I had done the work in the background mm-hmm. first. Yes, and I think people want to skip that step. Mm-hmm. You know, I didn't buy a course. <laughs> I didn't do any of that. I said, I'm going to learn by meeting people like you. And I learned a lot from the green room. I would ask yeah, them, yeah. what do you use? And what are you doing? And I would learn from people that were in the trenches, not a course. No, I understand. Not, yeah. not courses out there. I get it. But I'm just saying, learning from people that are in the, in the trenches, it just like in sales back in the SBC global days or number one, how did I learn how to sell? Cause I wasn't taught. I mean, I was not taught anything. Mm-hmm. How I was taught is I, literally drove around with the top salespeople. I literally became their slacky, you know, whatever. I bought them lunch. I you shadowed them, of course. Lunch. Yeah. I shadowed. Yeah, I listened. I went to their sales calls. I just sat there in the corner, listened to everything they said, how they did it. And then we got to drive around. I, of course, I asked them a thousand questions. That's how I learned. So why not same here? And then, so that's what happened and where we're at today. That's, that's absolutely phenomenal. And I think, that's, I think you had a really, uh, obviously everything you said was relevant, but I think one of the key nuggets that people can really listen to and really understand in their own life as well is when the dream we have in our heart, sometimes we focus so much on that, the end stage of whatever that dream is, as opposed to the foundational piece, which gets us there. When we go too fast and don't really absorb, assimilate, internalize whatever we're supposed to do right this second, then just like a foundation for a building, it's not going to last. It's not going to stand because when you truly understand the heartache and the pain, the joy and the ecstasy of whatever it is in that moment, that's when you appreciate it more. But if you, you know, strength that comes easy is no strength at all. You have to really understand the nuances and ins and outs of that before you can be that successful person that you want to be. You know, we, you know, on Facebook and social media, everybody sees, oh, this is my, my amazing life, but they don't see on the other side of, wow, I just had this incredible, you know, I broke up with someone and I'm heartbroken, whatever those things may be, is they don't see the other side. And so I think that's when people um, maybe fantasize about it, or it's more fantastical rather, as far as this is how my life is going to be, but don't realize that it's not always what you think because you have to learn and grow and develop and feel everything and learn everything before you get to the end result. And I'll say, I'll add to that, James, is that um, just like, I mean, people can relate to actors, you know, <clears throat> I think a lot and people see big time actors, you know, mm-hmm. big time Hollywood and they think, oh, well, I want to be like that. So I'm never going to go to a, um, what do they call them? Audition, mm-hmm. whatever, something big. Yeah. And I'm like, you're making a mistake because you have to understand that that actor who's now at where they're at went to, was on TV shows and commercials and yeah. <laughs> some really stupid shampoo commercial yeah. back in the seventies. You don't even know about, you know, like they yeah. did, they were, yes, they were. Yes. I mean, I think of Tom Hanks. I mean, he, he started literally in a sitcom, you know, I remember seeing that sitcom yeah. in the seventies. Right. So he started this really stupid sitcom. I remember. That, right? And he he wore these really stupid, really small shorts. And you're like, Whoa. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, look at where he's, you know. Look he's at Tom he Hanks, is. yeah. <laughs> so, uh, but he was willing to say yes. He was never a no. He was like, I'll try it. I'll try mm-hmm. it. I'll try it. Yes. I mean, yes. Uh, Forrest Gump, how he got that was pretty phenomenal. It was completely so- separate than what he's ever done before. People were like, oh, don't do it. It's going to ruin your career. So you have to be willing to say yes and that was one thing I take on in podcasting. People call me, hey, this this com- this uh, podcast wants to interview you. They they talk about NFL. Well, obviously, I know nothing about NFL. 
but I'm like, yeah, let's do it. You know, and I would, I had a great, you know, it was a great show. It was a lot of fun. I was like, well, look, oh, guys, I only like the Cowboys. Anything else? I'm like, let's not talk about it. They're like, oh, that's funny. Let's talk about the Cowboys then. I'm like, great. So we had this whole conversation about the Cowboys. So, I mean, be willing to say yes. Mm-hmm. Be malleable. Be, be yes, exactly. exactly. When, when I think, yeah, when, when you're too regimented and too rigid, yes. You're never going to grow and yeah, never going to grow and succeed. You're never going to be a successful, I shouldn't say never, but it's very rare there to be a successful entrepreneur because that's not how life works. Life is full of changes and and things just develop in such a very uh, serendipitous or um, uh, extemporaneous way that things, you have to be able to be open to say, okay, I'm going to try it. I'm going to do it. And you know, sometimes it works out great. Other times it doesn't, but it's a wonderful life learning experience for you to say, okay, kind of going back to what you said before, I don't want to feel this way anymore. So that particular thing didn't work for me. Maybe it didn't work just this particular time. Let me think about it later. Let me try it again later. Or maybe don't let me try it again later. But you won't know that until you actually put yourself out there. Mm-hmm. Very true. So when, with, your, with, the, with the, sh- the show, The Win, what type of guests do you, do you interview? So the things I look for are um, people that have some kind of entrepreneurial spirit, right? Mm-hmm. So they built something or they tried to build something or they're in the middle of building something, right? So, um, or they just have a passion for a particular niche. Maybe they're experts in health and wellness, but maybe they haven't built a business around that. Maybe, you know, so it just depends. Um, but what's interesting is I'm always open for more women. And I tell people that, that come, they, they say to me, Hey, you know, the bookers and whatnot. I'm like, Hey, do you have any women? They're like, <laughs> I won. You know, I'm like, why not? What is that? So, uh, I would like to promote more women. Uh-huh. Uh, I just think that uh, right now it's it's not as many uh, mm-hmm. people, experts out there that are willing to get on shows. And so I actually created a course about teaching people how to be a guest because I feel like one of the the challenges with that, they just don't know how. Yeah. I always tell people don't people don't want to hear about your resume. They want to hear your story. Yes. They want to hear how do you share your story. And one of the challenges I think specifically with women is they have a hard time sharing their story um, for whatever reason, a confidence or they feel like, Oh, I don't want to brag all that stuff. Mm, kind of. Yeah. So I was like helping them get through that so they can start to share their story and be the voice of their company, not just the structure of their company, but have exactly. it be the, voice of the company. Well, so it's like, same, yeah. I mean, I think when it comes to an entrepreneur, like for me, James Miller lifeology, I am James Miller lifeology. Yeah. I am the brand of that. That is, when, so when people see me, they think of my show or they, they think of the brand of that. And so it's the same type of thing when we separate from that and it's, it's, it's not always the same. You know, you are your company. You are the face of your yeah. company. You are the brand of your company. So I, I think that's a wonderful point that many people don't realize that my personality, my style, everything about me is all interwoven into James Miller Mythology. You know, from the, from the cheesy jokes I may say or the, um, that's wonderful, you know, those <laughs> silly things that I say all the time because that's me. And so that's just when you can really allow your personality and all the things that in your, in your life to come out in every area, then that's how you can be the most relatable and audible to your listeners or to your guests or to the, the hosts of the show you're on is because you're being an authentic person, an authentic entrepreneur. Mm-hmm, absolutely. And I, I find that the, 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 I would, excuse my language, the worst, the worst <laughs> guests <laughs> That, you know, bad or good, most of them sure, are great. Yeah. But the the ones that aren't as great, let me say that that way, that are, they're professional speakers. Yeah, I, I hear what you're saying, they're yeah. traveling the country and they're doing, you know, they've been doing professional speaking for a long time. What's funny about that is I find that they're not the best. Here's why. And, and again, I come from the speaking industry, so look, I, I get it. Um, is that they're kind of used to a monologue, you yeah. know. So James, introduce me. Okay, then then leave. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> shh, 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 you know? And you're like, this is a conversation. <laughs> exactly. I totally know what you mean because I, it is that way. And, and it doesn't feel, at least for me, it doesn't feel as authentic. And I'm thinking, well, I could have just gave you a question and then go through each question and that's it. And that's not how my show works. That's not how your show works. So I mean, yeah. it's, it's, it's the same thing. And, you know, wonderful. That's so great that that works for many other people in different shows. But for your show, for my show, that just doesn't fly because we, we just, I like conversation. Yeah. I yeah. Have- I had one person, let's say New Elf, I'm just person come on the show and um, he said whatever he said or oops, they said whatever they said and I tried and I could tell he didn't want to, want to interrupt them, right? Mm. And I finally was like, okay, this is my show and I, <laughs> I'm going to interrupt you. <laughs> okay? You know, and he's like, all right, yeah, all right. I'm like, okay, forget it. Yeah, so, yeah forget about uh, it. Yeah. But it's an interesting, I, I find that the ones that are the best 
are the ones that are truly authentic about their journey and their yeah. story. Yeah. Um, not a lot of ego in it and they really just want to share what's going on in their life, why they started the company, what mm-hmm. happened, what really got them to where they're at, the challenges they went through, the no's that they went through. I remember there's a movie out called Joy. Um, oh, I thought that was an amazing movie. Oh my right. gosh. So and powerful. That, that was not about like she created this mop, okay, that literally she's a multimillionaire at this yeah. point and many of the products, but it was the story of mm-hmm. her and the nose and the pullback and the the challenge she had to yes. come up against with her family and all the stuff going on there and her ex husband all this stuff that was what the juice was. Yes, and that, I think that was that resonated so well. I mean, look with me. Anyway, I'm sorry I cut you off because I'm so all excited right. about that movie. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Do not cut me. I know, right? (laughs) Well, Heather, it has been an absolute pleasure talking with you today. If my listeners would like to find out more information about you and about your podcast and all the amazing things you're doing, where would they find your information online? So they can go to heatherhavenwood.com. That's heatherhavenwood.com. Or as a free gift to you and your listeners, I want to give, I have my book out called Sexy Boss. The Mm -hmm. Empowerment of Women is Changing the Rule Book for Money, Success, and Sex, and Beating the Big Boys. And I want to give of your listener three free chapters of my audio book. So I, I wrote my book and then I put in audio, audio and audible. And then get three free chapters of my audio book by go, one of two ways. They can text the word sexy to 72000. So again, that's text the word sexy to 72000 on their smartphone. If they're in the United States, if they're not in the United States, unfortunately, what works, so you'll have to go to sexybossinc.com, sexybossinc.com. Excellent. Well, Heather, and thank you so much for being a guest on my show today. I really enjoyed speaking with you. Thank you, James. I also want to thank you, my listener, for joining with me today. Please subscribe to this radio show through whichever portal you joined with me. Also, please go to my website where you may sign up for my newsletter, enroll in the Lifeology Academy, watch my YouTube episodes, and read all the articles I've written just for you. If you'd like to become a guest or advertise on my show, simply visit jamesmillerlifeology.com. You may also follow me on all social media platforms under the name James Miller Lifeology, except for Twitter, which is James M. Lifeology. Have a fantastic day, and I look forward to speaking with you very soon.